in my hand. <laughs> Live from the beautiful city of Racine, Wisconsin, it's the podcast that I don't even know what this podcast does anymore. Honestly. We're getting our pen and paper out today. That's right. Yeah. It's we got, are. Yeah, we are. Mm. Especially, yeah. get, yeah. get your yeah. dice. Get, I get got your my dice, fan, get paper. fancy, uh, fancy metal dice. I should That's have brought it. them along with you me. You should have brought them. I'm not ready for that today. I got something for you to shake. All right. It's Guys Games and Beer! Yeah! yeah. Today we got special guests, and they are... We are uh, Liz and Floor from Angry Hamster Publishing. And uh, I'm Floor, and next to me, uh, sitting next to me is Liz. Hey. Hey. And they're here to talk to us uh, about a role-playing system that they had uh, sent us to take a look at. It's called uh, the Witch Role-Playing System. And uh, basically, it is kind of a darkness, kind of partially occult, uh, fantasy, yet modern role-playing game. Uh, and they're going to be talking to us today about it. But well, before we talk about games, let's talk about drinking. Oh, yeah. I like Which it. also is a game. No, no, no. I mean, that was a really great start, but let's talk about drinking. A beer. We got to talk about All right, beer. Yes, we have so. a new beer to talk about. So what are we drinking today? We picked up from Black River Falls, Wisconsin, and it is uh, Four Brothers Blended Beer Company. The, the Whippa Snapper! So you have to shake your fist angrily. Whippa Snapper! Uh, at the kids on your lawn. Tell them to get off. Uh, that's the best way to enjoy this beverage. Uh, and this is a Wheat Hell's Amber. And you need your wife beater t-shirt. Oh, heck yes. It's Wisconsin in the winter. I'm not wearing a wife beater. That uh, definitely sorry, makes no, you Wisconsin. No, it's Wisconsin in the winter. You're going to wear a wife beater in shorts. <laughs> okay, so this, yeah, this is a uh, Wheat Hell's Amber, as you're stating, so we'll see how it tastes. <laughs> Yeah, we just all sniffed our beer on radio. That was really good. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. We do great radio. Like, 12 people just <laughs> saw tastes, us sniff it, out. For a wheat beer? It's That's not bad. It's okay, yeah, but it's, it's, still a, it's still a wheat beer. Like, it doesn't really have much taste besides the wheat. I would it's, say it's a session beer. It's a session beer, and uh, I wouldn't drink it during winter, but... Really? Uh, we summertime. Just, but, no, we had this discussion uh, just uh, last time with, uh, what's his face? He does, you know, if it's a good beer you like, you can drink it anytime. You drink it anytime. I get that, but exactly. this isn't a beer that I like enough that I'd say, oh, hey. No, but on a hot day? Like, on a hot day, this would be delicious. Day, this is <laughs> awesome. All right. So, uh, gentlemen? Yeah, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Yeah, I'm gonna all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I'd drink it. For so, the I'd drink it. It's like, good. Yeah, no, it's a good solid beer. Yeah, it's a good solid beer. Also, I can't say that I'm like, the first you know, fan of wheat beers. Okay, but now, wait, wait. What is Angry Hamster drinking today? Okay, Flora has the interesting beer. <laughs> I, I have a Grolsch. This is very common in Holland. But it's a hair school. Doesn't yeah, stop I... it from being any less delicious. Sorry? It's just, it's still delicious. <laughs> Another good session beer. Yeah, it's a good session beer, yeah. <laughs> I love myself a dark beer, so I'm very happy with this. Flora bought the beer, and she kind of read <laughs> my mind, and I, I told her, I'm like, you know I like me a dark beer, so it's delicious. I drink this often. <laughs> okay, so yeah. what, what are you drinking? Oh, I'm drinking uh, an IPA by uh, Brewdog. Brewdog? <laughs> like like He-Man. Okay, yeah. so uh, Brewdog is... Are they a local brewery, or...? Oh, no, I think they're American, actually. Okay, yeah, I've never, I've never heard of them. Both, uh, All right. yeah. I've heard of uh, Flying Head Dog, but yeah. not Brewdog. I will we'll have to. Yeah, I know, if we, yeah. If we I ever drink we, every single beer in the we state, we only have two local breweries. Okay, yeah. so is the Brewdog any good? Yeah, it's nice actually. Yeah, it's a nice and re yeah refreshing kind of taste. You know, re fresh kind of taste. Yeah. Maybe you should sniff it. To also, be one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's your beer too. We did. I, I don't know how to talk like in a fancy way about beer, but I like beer. It's just delicious. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's good or it's not. You know, you know what it feels like. Exactly. All right. So I suppose we probably should get back to that wonderful description Travis was running of your game now. So you want to give us a quick <laughs> rundown for people who who would just be getting introduced to uh, say they don't know a whole lot about role playing. What is Witch about? All right. So basically, Witch is a dark modern fantasy role play system where you play a member of the Faded. And they are a witch or a warlock who sold their soul to a demon for power. And, um, yeah, basically the, the setting takes place in our world. The only difference is that there's magic and your character can wield it. Um, that's the basic premise of the game. And throughout the game, what's kind of special about um, our system is that we really promote characters' interactions with their own personal demon and also their personal story growth. So no matter what kind of epic, uh, epic plot line your DM has thought of, you're really going to get your own personal epic storyline as well, which is going to integrate 
with the main story of your game, which is uh, which is quite different than some games that we've played before. Yeah, we uh, we took some time. We kind of looked over the scenario and kind of just these base characters. And I, I really did like uh, the aspects that they had. Like, it, there's a lot that people get invested into their characters. They like they really want to you know role play because they want to feel to be an integral part of the storyline. And the, I have a feeling the way that the world works and the way you know you the, the the interconnectedness you have to this ma magical world as well as these demons. Uh, I think it's a really cool way to have each player have their own something special and kind of, um, you add know, to the storyline. Add to the storyline. You, 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 if you're bringing, if you're bringing your own personal backstory and demon into it, it, it makes the storyline a little more flush. Yeah, I, I I do have to say though, it's like I uh, I kind of saw and we kind of read through the. Uh, the uh, game or the game scenario that was provided it was a really good introduction to the world I think it did a really good job of introducing uh, some of the mechanics as well as uh, you know just generally what the world was about uh, as it kind of goes forward like is it gonna be are you gonna have like a set list of like characters or demons to choose from where you draw your powers from or is it gonna be something where kind of people can kind of be free to role play a little bit more and get creative well, basically, uh, the the six uh, the six fates are set. We have a couple more that, if you know, for some reason we're wildly successful, which I don't doubt we will be. There you go. <laughs> Good mentality um, that we, for it. We want to release, but there is also stuff in the book for DMs to make their own um, their own type of demons and stuff like that. So you can really bring that into the game because throughout the game you'll also be able to find other spells because basically each fate um, learns spells from their demon. And they're very specific spells, but you'll be able to go throughout the world and make, meet these uh, meet these other demons who are basically free agents. And if you can make a deal with them, if you can barter with them, then you'll also be able to get different types of magic and stuff. So there is possibility there for your DM to get a little bit creative. And if he says, like, oh, hey, I, I heard about this Hindu demon, which sounds really cool, I want to add it into the game, then uh, that's an opportunity for them. I do I do have to say, I really think it proposes something very interesting for DMs, because, you know, as, as sometimes DMs can get a little bored, a little stale, uh, because they don't really know how to challenge your players. Um, but I think it'll be fun for the DMs, because... You don't want to like totally screw over your party, but they have enough like layway to like say, "Oh, hey, yeah, you know, this is the the pact you have to make with your demon, and like this is you know how the story progresses." Right. Uh, like I think DMs can have a lot of fun, kind of creatively creating and, these character arcs right. for their players by creating packs like that. You can steer the storyline with your characters too. You can get backstories going by making backstabbing going on. You have to do something to your own party, things like that. So it does give you a little more freedom to do that kind of thing with the game as well. Yeah, definitely. Make it like a role. So, um, and yeah, I think for that. players familiar with role playing, they see some you know basic D twenty elements and things like that. Um, but it is kind of a more of a role playing system. Where where did you guys decide to kind of draw the line between kind of a more mechanics based role playing game to a more of a role playing based role playing game? Do I say that? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to be like. No, no, that was a very that's that's a great question. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, well, basically, for me, I really um, I often feel or like the way I like to play games is I always think that dice should just assist what you want to do as players. And also, it should give the DM a bit of relief, because there are obviously some games where you really kind of have to play God as a DM. Um, and I think that's what's nice about dice, is that, you know, you roll a couple dice and you say, well, oh, oh, shit, that just happened to your character. <laughs> You know? Um, and so for me, really, when I created the dice system, I just wanted to make sure that it supported the narrative that DMs wanted to play. And then, of course, sometimes you just want to do cool stuff. And, uh, and I went and decided that I also wanted the dice to support that. So it, it was, it's, it's kind of careful. And I always, I always say that if it's something normal for players to do, you shouldn't be rolling for it. For example, like if a concert pianist just wants to be in his own house playing piano, you're not going to make the poor guy roll for it. Just like you're not going to make a bodybuilder car carrying his girlfriend up the stairs roll for it. But under times of stress and under times where you're doing things like combat, then that's really when you want to get into the, let's roll some dice. <laughs> I, I, and like, I do have to say, I, this world is kind of very enamored me because I, I'm a big fan. I always roll magical classes. I play mages. I play wizards. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, like, the mystical and things like that. So this is really, uh, you guys have really, really focused this on mystical powers and spell casting and things like that. And the, the whole thing with the increased botch rolls... Basically, each time they cast, like, a spell or an ability, like, they have, like, daily cantos they can use, but they can keep using it over and over. The chance of failure increases so what what like kind of caused you to kind of be like oh hey like 
this is the magic system you guys wanted to have. Like, I do think it's very, very great for spellcasters, but what, what kind of decided, hey, I need a magic-focused role-playing system? Well, when, uh, when, we were, when we were thinking about the, the magic system, um, we, we kind of dislike the fact that as a caster, uh, you are suddenly out of spells, like, like the magic suddenly stops when your mana runs out. And we thought it would be really cool that you could cast infinitely if you were just willing to uh, take the risk of, uh, of what could happen. And so um, every time you uh, try a magic uh, on, a, on the same day, your, uh, your, your botch chance increases. And at some point that botch chance will get so high that it will uh, get, the same, uh, get the same number as your, uh, your difficulty class that you're rolling against. And if that happens and you still choose to uh, go on, you can trigger a massive event called an Eternity Chasm, or Chasm, and that um, will be something so horrible that, uh, like, maybe you open up an alternate uh, dimension with uh, evil clones of yourself that will try to, uh, to come and kill you, uh, or take over your world, even. Like, something really disastrous happens if you take it that far. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we, we felt it was, like, a good, good solution to... Uh, to give players some freedom with the magic. Now you've actually made a magic system that's a lot like drinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. The more, the more, <laughs> you, the more, you, the more you do it, the worse it gets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you have a better chance of boxing your drinking. <laughs> oh crap! I do it all the time. A lot of experience with this. With so drinking or magic? I just did it with uh, Warlock Schemes of Beer. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I do have to say, yeah. it's like I, I've definitely played, you know, your standard Dungeons and Dragons or other D20 system games like D20 Modern, uh, things like that. I do have to say, the way you guys have implemented, the way you cast spells, and it does really feel like I have this power and I can really use it, but there are consequences rather than, oh, hey, I'm just stuck doing nothing. You're doing mechanics. Yeah. Most magic systems are just basic mechanics. You, you're collecting the right items to do the spell, you have the right book to do the spell, you have a certain amount of mana through the spell. It's boring. It's a mechanic. It's boring. <laughs> Most magic systems are boring. This You've is done gotten very around well. that. And it's 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 done in a well. I I, I do think that it's it's a very balanced way to way to handle it, and I, I really think it's very beautifully done, to okay. to say the least. <laughs> so, getting back down to that, then so, what inspired all again? So really, you again, like you said, the other games do all kind of feel mechanical and and don't really feel like the magic's anything of interest. I mean, the focus on magic in this seems like it, it's a good way to focus. What kind of drew you to that? Were you okay? So if you were pl if you guys were playing D twenty or a GURP system, I take it you guys were always the mage. I was. I, I'm. I'm either. I, I tread the line between barbarian and sorcerer. Actually, I, I, I have the same thing. I like e either brute strength or very intelligent bookish people. Sometimes he <laughs> just needs to smash something over the head with an axe. Okay, but, but, barbarian, but, you know? but, but this but, game doesn't have a whole lot of head smashing or breaking things with axes. You, so. you do. You just you know. Yeah, but. Yeah, well, uh, the it's a more intelligent yeah, game. It's a more intelligent base on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. You, you know, have one fate that basically can come like become like a hulking stone monstrosity and smash as many things as it wants. That's what it uses as magic. zombies to stick on your enemies, yeah. or you know, trick them yeah. to falling down a chasm or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can get creative, by the way. You screw people over, smash them in. Um. <laughs> Keep going, you got this. He's like afraid Travis, of hogging. Tra Travis, yeah. got, like, Travis is afraid of hogging. He's like, no, Travis, go. You got Tra this. Travis is like our general DM. Yeah. So he yeah. does. He DMs them up. So, I mean, I, I definitely think that you've wrote some clever mechanics to kind of keep the DM interested in, in kind of keeping his players. And I'm sorry, it's GM nowadays. Oh, GM. Game should, Master. Sorry. I call him GM. I, yeah, I, we have old habits. Old school nerds. We are old school nerds. Yeah, so, um, but... Uh, is there anything, like, tip-wise that you would want for somebody who is a game master to kind of get players into which, who might not necessarily be role players, to kind of, like, draw them into the world? Have any tips? Uh, yeah, well, basically, we've um, we've included in the book, um, and that's kind of what I want to support, because I'm I'm a DM, I think Flora can attest to that, who really likes to screw with her players. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh there's, no, there's no nice way to say that. Um, yeah. But, and I kind of, you know, and I also like that as a player, you know, when you have a DM who kind of picks apart your backstory and adds something into the game, um, but obviously that can be very difficult for some DMs. I think, like, you're, you're saying, you know, some DMs, of players who aren't really experienced with that, you think like, well, how the hell am I going to do this? 
Um, so that's also why we've added in the demonic deer deal. So basically, um, your character can level up. Um, in a way, you can gain more spell levels, and at each spell level, uh, players are kind of forced to into a roleplay situation where you negotiate with your demon for more power, and he asks you to kind of do really horrible things. And this is, well, not horrible things, it's degrees of horribleness. <laughs> yeah, depending <laughs> who you're, somebody, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Degrees of horribleness. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, so that, that will, I think, what it does is that it gives uh, the player a personal quest, and it gives them a roleplay quest, basically. So I can be like, Hey, Flora, like, you can have the second spell level. I just need you to go to this playground and drop off this box for me. And, you know, then, then it, that gives the players, you know, all of a sudden the wheels start turning and she says, like, what's in that yeah, box? <laughs> and, what's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> Kittens, just deliver it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, like, I and I do have to say... Um, with each character having their own, like, arc and the way they deal with their demons and kind of bargain for power, um, as, as the role-playing, or as a campaign goes along, how do you see, like, a GM dealing with potentially diverting storylines kind of pulling back? And I know, I know that the GM will have to get creative on, like, pulling it into, you know, the main storyline or anything that you want to run the whole party through, but do you see kind of, like, certain players kind of, like, breaking off and having a couple smaller sessions to deal with, you know, maybe like this one person has to, you know, travel and sacrifice to, you know, a certain demon and the other one would be staunchly against it. Do you see kind of like player groups potentially breaking off different ways that way or do you see like GMs being able to pull it in? Yeah, you could, as a GM, you could handle it in uh, different ways. You could indeed do like a, a private session with the player where you just take them away from the group and handle their plot line. Um, but you could also see uh, that some uh, inter-party conflict you could play it through if, if it will lead to, uh, to an interesting conclusion. Or you could choose uh, to... Uh, or maybe the other players will go on the mission together with... the private mission together with the person. Maybe they want to help them. Like in our own uh, campaigns we've had a lot of instances where one person just rips off on their own to do something stupid. <laughs> Generally, generally, the rest of the party will follow after and try to help, <laughs> even though it's not. Whether well, or not they agree with it necessarily, <laughs> yeah, I, I do think because I mean sometimes you have like weeks or two weeks where a player can't show up or something like that, or you have a, like a set of people, so you're left with a smaller group. And I, I do think that with these personal stories, there are ways to fit that stuff in, where you can weave in, you know, their personal stories, their demons, their sacrificing for power and things like that when you kind of weave in and out players, so you don't have to be necessarily stuck with the same static group. I think that's kind of interesting that way. Um, I'm kind of yeah. looking forward to seeing where that goes, for sure. Yay! Okay, let's uh, keep going on general, uh, uh, more general questions. When, uh, now, is this your absolute first uh, game that you wrote, RPG that you wrote? Well, I, um, I've i written adventures for the Living Forgotten Realms of Wizards of the Coast. Um, I've written a couple, a couple of adventures for them. But indeed, this is my first roleplay system that we are... Well, not the first roleplay system that I I've, I've thought was <laughs> was good enough to develop. <laughs> but um, the first one that we, uh, we've we actually thought, like, no, actually, Liz, this one is good to, <laughs> to give and show the general public. Yeah. Did you yeah. uh did you develop a bunch when you were a kid? I, I remember when we were kids we must have came up with like five, six oh. different engines. All the time. All of ours sucked by the way. Yeah, yeah. They, no. they, they, yeah. <laughs> not fit for publication. Yeah, not fit for publication. <laughs> we always thought we could write games, but no. No. <laughs> no, I mean yeah, also it was, it was funny, we did we decided to run Witch with our moms. We're like, let's just run Witch with our moms and podcast it to see what happens. <laughs> wow, okay, that does seem a little bit different. Yeah, and my mom was like, you are always thinking of this crap, and the rules always just changed around. This this type of game is perfect for you, because of course she had no idea what a roleplay game was before this, and I'm like, thanks, mom. <laughs> 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 so, so, yeah, I was, I was always thinking of crap. I remember, like, the first job I wanted to have was, like, board game designer, and that's before I discovered the awesome world of roleplays. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Again, first, this is your first RPG. You said you didn't want to do board games. Have you done any board games before? No, I haven't. Uh, no, no, no. It's like, really, this is like kind of our flagship this for Angry Birds. Right. How long have you guys been role-playing for? Oh, oh God. God. So long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, wait, wait. Not as long as me. See, I'm old. I'm really old. So, <laughs> I, I, remember, I, I actually remember D&D &D first edition. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, come on. That was the 80s. 
Uh, it doesn't matter. It's still old. <laughs> that's almost. That's thirty-five years almost. Dude, that's old. <laughs> well, that is old. <laughs> <laughs> that's older than I am alive. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> He's been role playing longer than I have been alive. That's old. Yeah, that but you old. were just born I yesterday. I tried to take him on, and then I also had the same thing. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not even close. Yeah, uh, he here in Wisconsin, we're kind of the the cradle of of. Of, uh, of modern modern game. role playing games. Role play. Yes, I was about to say I was trying to yeah. change my head. because the, the Brits the Brits beat us out with chainmail. Oh, yeah, chainmail, and then D and D ripped it off. Yeah, then then, <laughs> then, Gary, then Gary Gygax stole the rules and made them into Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, <laughs> so. Yeah. No, he created that entirely on Barnash. Oh yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> Completely by himself. Keep, keep going with that. Keep going. But with uh, that. yeah, no, it's a uh, role playing is super huge in Wisconsin because a there's a lot of role playing games that kind of started their way here, and b it's cold, you know, so long of the year we have to stay inside and drink and do something. We do yeah. have an inordinate <laughs> amount of board game uh, based festivals and uh, and other things. Role playing, role playing and LARP festivals. There are yeah. ga- literally, you, the, every, every city has some kind of game festival that goes on all year long. Yeah, in this, yeah, in this particular state, it's like Every month you can go to something. Yeah, maybe every week. Yeah, rather really, darn near. We were actually we were the home of the original Gen Con, uh, ge- which was the first kind of Dungeons and Dragons festival that started at a local you college. Start this? You yeah. Start this? yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I you am. bastard sold out. You sold out. You <laughs> moved away from Wisconsin. You went to Indianapolis. Not saying it's not bad in Indianapolis, but it was better in Wisconsin. <laughs> I, have okay, some, no. I have some anger issues I, on I, that I whole thing. I just want to say, I feel like you're throwing down the gauntlet right here. No, no, I, 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 I don't. I, I, I think we can just stay out of this. I just have some personal. He has no personal sure. demons. Uh, yes, I, yeah, I <laughs> made pack with my own personal demons. Well, we used to be able to go to Gen Con and just like pass out there. Yeah, and we did all the time. Now you got to drive back. Well, you don't have to. It's just they kind of kick you out at the end. So yeah, there's, there's, we, we have our, we have our heart and soul in the, in the like role playing and board games. We, we, we are big fans. So it's just like, we, we get very passionate and very heated sometimes, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's- Hey, that's okay. Like like we all do. We just wait, you know, pet peeves. Like, start talking to Flora and I about the ending of Mass Effect. Oh, we're gonna. Yeah. Oh, 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 Games, the other games you suggest inspiration-wise to kind of get your head into a role-playing type aspect, or mm, that's a good question. I mean, I have I have a lot of like when I wrote the um, I wrote the game, I I watched a lot of TV. I watch a lot of TV. Um, I mean, that's glorious, glorious Netflix. Um, <laughs> you seen it? But yeah, so we you know like in terms of I think actually just watching a lot of things and reading a lot of things can really help you with role play. Um, not you know not necessarily other games because what I like most about it is when you meet new role players who are kind of just creative people in general they they don't have any boundaries and I think that's kind of the most awesome thing like you can fly also oh. I don't know boundary <laughs> issues have never helped me yeah <laughs> because they have no boundaries so you can do whatever you want them. <laughs> 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 but no, I, I think like it, it's it's nice that kind of creativity because now when I go into games, you know, I automatically think, you know, what is the mechanic? Yeah. What can I do here? And people who don't really know, and you just give them a description of the setting, you know. So you say like, one girl described her game as adult charms, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. I can roll with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you give you give them that kind of setting. Um, it kind of it kind of helps already. Just uh, you know, or think like you know, American Horror Story, dark. Uh, I, yeah, my personal uh, teenage uh, crush. Is, uh, the Croft, but oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I used to love. That. I've seen that movie like five. Yeah, right. A guilty pleasure. I, that is a guilty pleasure movie. Okay, I've actually seen it. So I'm not gonna lie, I have seen it. Okay, right. so you guys have a Kickstarter launching next month. Uh, is there anything you guys are kind of doing to get ramped up for the launch of the Kickstarter? Oh, um, well, like you know, drinking a lot of beer. Um, <laughs> it makes things more tolerable. That's it does. Yeah. No, well, well, we're blogging a lot. So at angryhamsterpublishing.com, you guys can read all our blogs and stuff. see how I just added that in there. Yeah. Um, nice job. That <laughs> was good. We, we're blogging a lot. Um, we've also we sourced all our materials and stuff, so we're just now confirming with all our suppliers that everything is good to go. Um, yeah, and demoing a lot. A yeah. lot, a lot of demos. Okay. And in Holland. <laughs> and online. Yeah. So with the, uh, with the kickstart... Now, this is going to be available on your site as well as at game stores or just at game stores? 
Um, the the Kickstarter, obviously, that's um, that's online. But then once uh, once we get the, enough money to publish the book, we're also going to start selling it at game stores too, and people will also be able to buy it uh, off our site, AngelaHamsterPublishing.com. Again, there we go. Um, but uh, yeah, we're also going to be calling up stores and trying to get them to stock the game, uh, the game book as well. Yeah. Good, so, good. okay, I gotta ask a question. We're, do, yeah, I was right. gonna, go yeah, ahead. I was gonna bring up artwork. Uh, who? Yeah. We're looking at your poster right now, and uh, the poster really reminds me of. Uh, remember, uh, Commodore sixty four games during the mid eighties. It does have this. Had, that had this feel. Look, I love the artwork. Who did your artwork? Oh yeah, she's amazing. Her name's Ada DeRitter. Um, if you go, if you go to our website and you click on the about us, you can get to her profile page. Um, she is amazing. We have we work with four amazing artists actually. Um, Ada's done a lot of our promo work, and she's actually has a game that is going to be released. It's a point and click adventure, kind of like the Telltale game, so kind of like the Game of Thrones, The Wolf Among Us, and oh, things cool. like that. Um, and it's called Harold, and she does all the artwork for that, and she's just insanely good. Yep. Especially when you should see the briefings we give her. I'm like, I need a girl with red hair with a misty arm. And then she she just knocks it out, and she draws exactly what's in your mind. It's, yeah. it's kind of crazy. She has, I think she has powers. She made a deal with the demon. <laughs> <laughs> it's not natural how she does these things. She's really good. Yeah. I love the baseball bat in there because it brings the, you know, because you're expecting yeah, no, to be a sword and then exactly, you're like, the guy's got the bat. It brings right. it into modern day, which I really like. All right. so, I can talk art all day. Um, basically, I, and one other, this is like the last detail thing that I, I've really noticed is, um, so I, they had in your uh, kind of uh, campaign that you had provided with, there's the ritual, uh, and I, I really thought it was kind of a, a cool part. Uh, how do you looking at it, expanding your ritual system and kind of making it so players can kind of get creative on the things they can do in rituals? Because it kind of looked like it had like a spoken component, uh, as well as you know things you need to kind of complete it, and it kind of degrees in difficulty of how powerful you needed to be. But what are, what are some crazy ideas you expect to do with the ritual system? Because I think that's pretty cool. Okay, um, well, the ritual system is cool because it can be affected by magic alteration. So what players can do is um, all rituals have a spoken component that you need to follow no matter what language it is in. Um, and you kind of have to follow the words um, that are with it. Like we have one um, we have one ritual where you have to open a lock and you have to say a certain words. But um, with magic alteration, what you can do is you can kind of screw with the words and say, oh, actually, you know, this means this. Like, for example, instead of opening a lock, maybe you want to open someone's mind to you. Okay. Um, and then using different ritual components, you can kind of get into that. But also what we really want to expand are the uh, the spiritual rituals. We have two different types of rituals in the game, and uh, those you can do crazy things with. And it's kind of up to your DM. So you tell your DM, like, I want to make this spiritual ritual to summon a changeling to me, for example. Um, and because you're not really, um, it's not on the practical side, so you're not using concrete components, you're really just trying to summon as much um, ambient ether in the area, and you're making your own spell. The DM basically has a table um, and a little chart that he can use in order to decide on the effect that it's going to have, and things can get pretty wonky. <laughs> Yeah. At least it's not doing it right. I, I honestly think, you know, as, as somebody who does like to DM, I, I think that the DMs can have a lot of fun uh, role-playing this game for their players. And I, I really think it's... Both the players can very much enjoy it because it's, it's a very unique... And there, there's some really, like, weird quips. And I think the DM can just have fun if they really want to, like... It's just screwing with people enough to, like, make them on their toes but not upset them. I like it. I, I think <laughs> it's, it's a good balance. You know, as, as a DM, you want to have a little fun with your players and poke at them a little bit. Keep them... Oh, especially... especially there's always that one player. Who, who tries is, to break... Everything tries to break your system. Exactly. So yeah. you, you, you really need to, and you don't want you don't want to kill him because that's not funny. It's kind of obvious. I'm just going to kill you off. No, I'm just going to just poke and poke, prod. Just poke and prod. You <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, that's a fine line. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> I really, do, I really do think this system locks it well. I really do. There's You're all... not talking about me, right? <laughs> no, no. Oh, oh, no personal influence. No personal. Sir. Yeah, no personal influence there. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask one more time. You had mentioned a few times. What is the website people should go to to check out your game? It is angryhamsterpublishing.com. All right. And do you guys have a day set where you plan to launch the Kickstarter, or is it just going to be sometime in March still? No, first first of March it is going All right, by. first of March. So we have an official... All right, we have it. that will be on our website as well, so make sure you check the website out. We'll have links and the Kickstarter... The Kickstarter, do you have a site for that already? 
Um, we do have a preview site, but it's not completely done yet. So uh, we can send well, on the first of March. We'll send you guys the link as well. That'll be great. We'll make sure we'll put the link up on our site as well. So there will be a link again. Support your RPGs. Kickstart this with us. It looks like a great magic system. Link to Angry Hamster will be under the Guys We Like section. All right. All right. Anything else you guys want to say about the game? No, I think that's. Uh... I th I think uh, I think Travis covered it pretty damn well. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Okay. Today, today was I mean, Travis's day I mean, in the barrel. I'm a paper nerd. I can't help. Yeah. That. So he he had to do, he was doing the heavy lifting today. Yeah, he's been waiting. Or else just drinking. <laughs> I think if you like magic, you like dark personal storylines, but you also like a bit of adventure where you can go and explore cool and weird things that you've never experienced before, then this is uh, this is really the game for you. And yeah, we hope you like it, and of course we are always looking for people to give us feedback and what they think about the game, so please don't hesitate to contact us. We're really happy to hear what you think, and if you have suggestions, or even if you just want to know more about the game, we're, uh, we're here to talk. All right, I think that pretty well covers the game. Rob, go ahead. And, and if you're interested in which, of course, we will be bringing the copy with us at the Midwest Gaming Classic in April. Right, so if you are at Midwest Gaming Classic, there is the board gaming session section in the main lobby. We will mm -hmm. be running. Which is growing every year I know, quietly. Which is great. I love that. Yeah. So we will, be running, year, we will be running a, at least one or two games of which in the board gaming section. Correct. And. If you want to visit us, it's at www.guysgamesandbeer.net. And if you want to visit us on Facebook, it's www.facebook.com slash guysgamesandbeer. Yes, that's Guys, Games, and Beer. For Christ's sake, quit messing it up, people. <laughs> yeah, how hard Larry's is that? not here. He's the one that always messes it up and gets it wrong. Uh, also, on Twitter, at guysgamesbeer. Twitch, where My, you get to see Mr. Mikey. Mr. Twitch. Mr. Twitch here. Guys, Games, and Beer. Thank you very much for watching this episode or listening, which is what you're probably doing, as we well know. <laughs> yeah. Not much to look at. Not much no, to look at. Yeah, 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 really. No. Yeah. Way to sell the YouTube station, guys. <laughs> <laughs> guys, games of beer, we're not much to look at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's our slogan That's next week. Slogan. Yes, thank you. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks. Bye. Bye. Visit the Gutter Geeks at www.guysgamesandbeer.net. Visit us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash guysgamesandbeer. Also on Twitter at guysgamesbeer. And visit us on our Steam group. Yeah, it's guysgamesandbeer too. <laughs> <laughs>